Adventures are supposed to be fun. One day, I want to take you on a fun adventure. That is a very interesting line that was said by our high elf female character. So, as we all know, thanks to the last episode of Goblin Slayer, we found out that this series is set in the universe of D&D. So, if you know about Dungeons and & Dragons, and how the Dungeon Master, Game Master, however they operate, they create the scenario. And, you know, with all the revelations that happened in the last episode, and also comments and stuff from you guys in my review, basically, it's very obvious that Goblin Slayer is basically like an NPC that is not allowing the Dungeon Master, the Game Master, and the characters within the game that, you know, pick their characters to allow to play the game. Because he just wants to kill goblins. He's completely derailing their entire scenario, which is just fascinating to think about. And I like how, if you look from an outsider's perspective of this episode and see how the ogre was done, it's kind of like the dungeon masters happen to go out of his way to make goblins a part of the Demon King's army. That's what it looks like to me. Because, I mean, it's very clear that since this is being made by a dungeon master, everything to the villains, to what they're having to fight, the situation, it was pretty much like the ogre is an underling of, you know, the demon king, and then you have it to where if we take, you know, this dude down, it makes it to where the demon king loses power, but also less goblins are coming about in this area. So, it's kind of like trying to figure out a way to try to get the goblin slayer to continue on with the story, while also allowing this man to continue his obsession of wanting to kill weak goblins. But anyways, let's uh, let's talk about the teamwork, the party, and all of that that happened within this episode of Goblin Slayer. This, honestly, I feel like is probably going to be highly underrated, and many are going to look down upon it in this episode, just the overall skill of this party. And I feel like many are just going to want to focus on either the edgy stuff, maybe the, the girl that was wanting the Goblin Slayer to get rid of all the goblins, or, you know, the, the, the scene to where the goblins are getting killed by the High Elf. I mean, I know many are probably going to be focusing on those points, and even the Ogre when he was taken down by Goblin Slayer. But I want to talk about just the outright teamwork of these individuals and what they had to do to be able to allow them to take down all of these opponents. One character that stood out to me, and I think many are just going to misjudge or not think too highly about, is the dwarf. See, at first glance, when you see what the dwarf was doing within this episode, it doesn't seem like he's crazy flashy like our lizard boy, or our high elf, or our priestess, or goblin slayer. The dwarf doesn't seem that flashy. He seems just like a spellcaster that can use some rocks and all that, and that's basically it. But... Let's think about what he did in the first encounter against the entire room filled with goblins. See, even though goblins are incredibly weak, we already know this, see, him kind of stopping all those goblins from fighting and putting them all to sleep saved so much time, but also allowed them to be able to face the ogre. Let me explain. Think about it like this. If you're playing a game, Dungeon Master, if you're playing D&D &D and you're a Dungeon Master, or if you're the players that's, you know, following the scenario of the Dungeon Master, you know, the Dungeon Master most likely is going to put a very challenging boss. And it really shows that the Dungeon Master went out of his way to make that boss, the Ogre, very challenging, along with going with the Goblin Slayer with what he wants, but made it to where they had to play a risky move. Either they fought all of the Goblins without the Dwarf using his magic, and then they would have been drained a little bit, and then they would have been able to keep their magic spells, but they would have been drained because they would have had to use potions and stuff, which then they would have had to fight the final boss. So they, in a way, both situations would have have been rough, but the dwarf stopped them from having to really, you know, use all of their energy to fight just, you know, the frontline soldiers like the goblins, and they saved it for the ogre later on in the dungeon. So, the dwarf saved the day. Honestly, he is kind of like the highlight of this episode. He really, you know, saved a lot of time, and he allowed them to be able to face the ogre in the first place, because what if the goblin slayer would have had to have used his scroll against those little goblins, they would have all been wiped and died in that moment. So it just, it really, when you take a moment to think about everything that happened within this episode, you know, it was very good by the dwarf to, you know, have that type of skill set. He kind of cheesed the scenario within this dungeon, but it makes sense because of how his character is, or at least how he wrote his character. 
But, yeah, I just feel like the Dwarf is going to be very underrated. Not many people are going to think highly of him after all just the skill and everything he did within this episode. But, okay, let's also talk about the High Elf. So, the High Elf, it's clear as day that she's uh, starting to become more and more like the Goblin Slayer. For instance, losing her mind in a way and just having pure on rage and hatred towards goblins. I mean, she saw one of her own kind basically tied up like that, it, it, it was horrific. And you gotta imagine, seeing one of her people in their country is very close by and seeing one of her people like that, obviously it's gonna change your overall mindset. And so when you see the scene where she's just like, you know, stabbing the goblin, it's, it's pretty brutal, but it shows that she's probably becoming a mini goblin slayer. And I feel like before everything is said and done, even though all the characters like the dwarf, the lizard man, the priestess, and, you know, the high elf are all technically real players, I feel like they're going to go along with the goblin slayer and actually be on his side in terms of how goblins need to be stopped. But the dungeon master is going to have to make it different to where it will still go alongside of that, wanting to kill goblins, but keep them in the realm of, you know, trying to stay where they are, weak on the bottom of the food chain. But anyways, let's talk about the situation in this episode of how the party system was done. So, the priestess is definitely upgraded. She used a lot of spells. I think she used like four, maybe five spells against the ogre and the goblins within this. I was very surprised she was able to hold back that, you know, fireball like that. And even though it drained a lot of her energy, she really couldn't do much. To be able to withstand the power of something like that, that's... She had to have a high roll. There's no way her roll with the dice was low because, I mean, for her to be able to survive an attack like that and then, you know, be able to get out of that is pretty freaking impressive. Which, by the way, Goblin Slayer, once again, he never ceases to amaze me with just his skill, his quick wit, and what he can really do. I mean, the man basically used a scroll that is a gate to get out of danger and all that, but he used the scroll to open up a gate to the bottom of the sea to create water pressure just to be able to take down the ogre. That is absolutely ridiculous. And it really just goes to show one of the most powerful weapons that anyone can have is the mind, the imagination. Because, honestly, if you hear a spell called gate, just teleport somewhere, would you have honestly thought of putting a portal on the bottom of the sea to use the water pressure that would come out of it to just cut someone in half. You, you probably wouldn't think about something like that. They honestly, right over your head. It went over my head. I'm not going to lie. I didn't think about that. So just like, Goblin Slayer is a scary man. He, it's a very scary man, especially with what the ogre said. He's like, why would you have such a high level skill? Why would you do something like this against goblins? That's what the, you know, the ogre was saying. And in a lot of ways, I feel like that was kind of like the dungeon master and the players saying that as well that's playing the game. Like, why would you have something so ridiculous against freaking goblins when you could easily use this against, let's say, the demon lord, the demon king, to take him down? It just, it raises so many eyebrows and questions. You're like, my god, this man really does not like goblins to do something like that. So, yeah, very cool. By the way, Goblin Slayer is a straight-up savage. Like, what he said to the ogre, he's like, goblins are still scarier and, you know, stronger than you or whatever, and then he puts the man down. That's, in a lot of ways, frightening, because, I mean, Goblin Slayer, he just made this man feel like an absolute joke. He's like, yeah, she hurt me and all that, but at the end of the day... Goblins are still worse than you are and harder and I'm just like whoa this man. It's just straight up. He is uh, He is a savage which by the way I do like the fact that the man basically he's like oh you're not a goblin like he asked the ogre like wait You're not a goblin and all that and I'm glad he didn't just get up and run or whatever But he put like a and B together. He's like wait a minute. So you're not a goblin but you're working with goblins, and if I don't kill you, obviously more goblins are going to come about, so you are a goblin. <laughs> That's pretty much like his thought process and how he ended the ogre within this episode, just taking the man out, and it was pretty cool. I, I, I just got to say, every time his soundtrack plays, like Goblin Slayer soundtrack, like that metal Doom Slayer song, I'm like, man, I cannot get enough of this series. It's truly just a fun series to watch for Fall of Anime, you know, 2018. So, uh, what else is there really left to talk about? I guess one of the few little things to talk about would just be overall 
how these individuals, you know, these characters, they really have their own skill set that just works well together, like the High Elf being the Ranger, attacking from a distance, the Dwarf being a Spellcaster that can use, let's say, CC abilities, crowd control, or whatever, and then, you know, you have the stuff with the Lizardman, he's able to do summons and all that, which is incredibly powerful, by the way, because, I mean, a summoner can easily do some crazy things depending on how high level he gets, and then, you know, Goblin Slayer, we've already seen this man, even though his armor isn't, like, 10 out of 10 from what we could assume, he still, he has a lot of strength to just be able to take down these type of foes like it's nothing, even ogres itself. That man truly is a freaking monster. But I think I want to end this video at that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below how you felt about this week's episode of Goblin Slayer. Did you enjoy it? Did you hate it? Be honest in the comments below. I'm very curious. And with that, I love you guys. If you want to get notified for whenever, you know, I upload a video, please click, you know, the bell icon down below. Because for some reason, even if you click the subscribe button, you don't always get notified. So if you want to get notified, click that bell icon. With that, Chibi out.